there are a few things more frustrating than getting to a final interview of a job you really want and then not getting it. But the reality is this happens to candidate all the time. And it happens for a few key reasons. In today's video, I'm going to give you four reasons why you might struggle to get that offer when you get to the end of the road from a recruiter's perspective. All right, let's go. Now, one of the things that's important to understand is that when you get to the final interview, the final interview of an interview process, every single candidate who arrives at that point, your competition is qualified. They're all qualified. They've all been through the same round of interviews as you, right? So if you talk to a recruiter, then the hiring manager, and now you're at a final interview or you're, you, know, you did a panel interview, whatever it is, everybody who reaches that endpoint is qualified. And in, in, in most cases, I can tell you from being on the inside, they're all almost equally qualified. So there are a very few select things that you can do to differentiate yourself as a candidate at this point. And if you fail to do them, well, the other candidates might be. So make sure you stay tuned as I share these four things for you, because if you skip even one of them, it might be the reason you don't get the job. Now, the first thing we need to talk about here is passion. Passion matters, and it matters the most when you are closest to the offer. I hear so many times, hey, can, can, we, um, can we just accept that people only work for money? Or can we normalize that people only work for money and don't have passion around a job? And the answer is, if you want to obtain a competitive job, no. The answer is no. Now, don't get me wrong. It is okay to, you know, just work for money and then care about living and enjoying life and all that kind of stuff. But the interview is not the time to emphasize that. In the interview, you want to show them passion, right? You're talking about three candidates at a final interview, and they're all equally qualified. And the hiring manager is sitting there looking at all three with similar career arcs, similar credentials, you know, similar uh, you know, certifications, whatever it is that's gonna make someone qualified for this specific role. And if two candidates are like, yeah, so I'm qualified. And one candidate's like, I am qualified for this role. I love this type of work and I'm passionate about doing it. And I hope I get to do it for you. Who do you think they're gonna go with? They're gonna go with a passionate candidate. I always tell people, if you have a problem conceptualizing this or, or coming to terms with this, this uh, objective truth in the interview process, imagine you are interviewing someone to watch your child or watch your pet. And you interview three nannies and of the three nannies, two say to you, I just watch kids for money. And one goes, I've always loved kids and I'd love the opportunity to watch your kid. Your kid's so cute. Who are you gonna go with? You're gonna go with that last one, passion matters. If you want to pursue competitive jobs, you can't ignore it, you don't have that option. The next thing that's critical if you wanna get offers when you get to the final round is you need to understand what your unique advantage is and you need to talk about that, okay? A unique advantage is something you have that other people don't. So for example, for me, um, when I interviewed for my current role, I had both agency experience, so working for third-party recruitment, as well as corporate recruitment. I had both of those things, and a lot of people who are interviewing for the role that I was interviewing for don't have that combination, or they didn't have enough of it. So when I'm interviewing, I can position myself as someone who brings something to the table most of the competition doesn't. Whatever that is for you, you need to identify that, you need to learn how to talk about that so it's compelling, and you need to bring that up in interview so they understand that with all candidates, they're gonna get a lot of the same things, but with you, they're getting this and this. They're getting a unique advantage. Maybe it's that you have uh, more advanced education. Maybe it's you have more certifications. Maybe you speak multiple languages. Maybe you've worked in more uh, industries than most of the people who do what you do. Whatever that unique advantage is, you need to understand what that is and find a way to position it as an advantage in an interview. One of the things best candidates do is they quantify their impact. And if you're in a final round interview and you don't have the ability to quantify your impact in previous roles, well, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. Quantifying your impact is the difference between saying something like, I increased sales in my prior role, or in my prior role in the first 12 months I took over, I increased sales 25%, which resulted in a uh, increase in revenue by $400,000 by specifically targeting A, B, and C uh, types of companies. You see what I did there? I mean, that's very specific towards sales, but in just about every field, you can find a way to quantify the impact you have made. This is key because it allows hiring managers, HR people, and recruiters to imagine the things you could do for their organization. If you don't quantify your impact, 
then you are leaving that on the table. So one of the things that great candidates do is they quantify their impact to allow hiring managers to go, man, if I hire this person, that is the type of thing they could do for me. So you wanna make sure you do that too. The last thing that I wanna talk about that really great candidates do is they interview to intentionally demonstrate they are a culture fit or they are in value alignment with the organization. So what does this mean? And I know culture fit gets a lot of heat and it should. A lot of people have biases they're not aware of and they culture, um, culture fit higher just to create an echo chamber. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is values. So when you go on a company's website and you go to the about us section um, or who we are or whatever they use um, to talk about you know, what they're like and what they value, look at that. Most companies will have values there. They'll have excellence there. They'll have determination there. You know, they'll have a whole, whole host of things. What you wanna do when you interview is you want them to walk away feeling this person would be a good fit for the values we hold dear. How do you do that? Well, there's a few different ways. I've made videos on it, but one of the things you can do is at the end, they're gonna say, Ben, do you have any questions? And one of the questions you could say is, well, I was doing my research from your organization. On your website, I saw that one of your values is determination. Can you tell me a little bit about how you've seen that in your organization um, demonstrated recently, right? And just talk about how it's important to you. Ben, what attracted you to, the, um, to our organization? Well, I was doing my research on your organization and I went to your About Us page and I really resonated with the value. Specifically, the value of excellence is really important to me because I'm always someone who wakes up and puts a lot of value in taking pride in their work and doing the best they can. So seeing that that matters to you like it matters to me really hit home. Additionally, I feel like I'd be a great fit for the role because of A, B, C, and D, right? That's another way you can demonstrate that. Great candidates are demonstrating that they are in value alignment in their interview and you can do it too. Now, some of you who have reached the end of this video are probably like, man, hiring managers are so picky, Ben. Why are they so picky? Well, I talk about it here. I actually give you six different reasons why hiring managers are so picky. Why is this video of value? Well, if you can understand why, then you can cater your responses and cater your approach to be successful. So I am done here, but I will see you over there.